I want to talk about why different prescriptions, different formulas are made as pills and others were originally made as powders and others were tongue or decoction formulas. And, um, you know, this was something that was never explained to me in school. And once I figured out the answer, it's like, wow, that's a pretty amazing idea. Why wasn't I taught that? So if you actually understand this, I think it's something that you can do to make your medicine more effective as long as the patients will comply, which is an issue. So ancient doctors did write the formulas in different formats for a reason. It wasn't just random. They thought that the format, the form of the formula contributed to how well it would work because different formats have different strong, you know, strengths and others have other strengths. And so, yeah, why is it Shaoyosan and not Shaoyotang? Why is Lue Dihong Wan a uh, pill and not a decoction? And so if you think that herbs are just their chemical components, then this isn't going to make sense to you. But if you actually um, you know, understand that qi and flavor and other factors can enhance um, or define an herb's function, well, there's some similar things for formulas. So let's examine this. Uh, there's a Ming Dynasty book called Pao Zhi Dafa. It's actually in large part quoting from earlier works, but um, this is what its author Miao Xi Yong had to say. He said, each type of herbal preparation, such as pills, powders, decoctions, and syrups or ointments or gao, which includes a lot of different things. Each is appropriate for a specific thing that it can do, a specific function. And you should not depart from the manufacturing process. He tells us that herbs are suitable for different things. Some are better for pills or, or for powders, or you can decoct in water, or some are really good for soaking in liquor or alcohol. Some are good for boiling into a syrup or an ointment. And some things you could use in a lot of different ways, but other things need to be used in very specific ways. He says you cannot go beyond the nature of the herb. You can't push the herb to do something that it doesn't want to do. And the word herb there could also mean medicine. Um, so you can't push a medicine into a, a square peg into a round hole. And so here's his explanation, which does come from earlier sources. It's also found in Bunso Gangmu by Li Shijian. He says, decoction means to wash away. There are other ways we could translate this term, but you know, it's kind of the basic idea. And note that the word decoction, if you look at this character and then you look at the word that means wash away, it's the same character except to wash away has another little bit on top, a radical on top. In addition, if you were reading this in, in Mandarin, dang means, I'm sorry, tang means dang. It like rhymes, it's almost pronounced the same in some dialects, it might be pronounced the same. And so this is both a visual pun and, you know, it rhymes or it's almost a, a pun in terms of the words. In literary Chinese, this is really considered a skillful way of writing. And so, so he's defining, which is very common in literary Chinese, he's defining one thing by another word that sounds very similar. So, so decoction means to wash away. This means boiling herbs into a clear liquid. Use it to remove serious disease. Um, okay, so we know, yeah, decoctions are the best when there's something, you know, serious. Um, we'll talk about this more later. Powder means to scatter. And actually, it's the very same character that with one... Um, tone, san, third tone, means powder, but the same exact character with the fourth tone, san, means to scatter. And so powder means to scatter. 
This means grinding herbs into a fine powder and use it to remove acute diseases, but it's especially going to scatter accumulations and excesses. Um, and then here, before I was, I said ointment here, it says syrup, um, probably should say syrup in the previous ones, but gal means owl. <laughs> gal um, syrup or ointment or whatever means to simmer for a long time. Um, syrups are simmered for hours and hours and hours. And, you know, ointments and so forth are also simmered quite a bit. Um, so, okay. Um, liquid, he doesn't have a pun for that. Um, liquid, but he uses the term yay, is basically pounding fresh herbs and bringing them out to get the juice. Um, and that was used a lot because, you know, in China, a lot of these plants or herbs you could grow in your garden and then you could just juice them. <laughs> but um, here that's less likely. Anyway, then finally, pills, which are wan, um, means slow. Um, which is Juan. So Juan means Juan. <laughs> it's, you know, rhymes. It's almost pronounced the same. These pills are made into round pellets. They don't act quickly to remove disease, but they do remove it gently and slowly, which is the meaning of Juan, um, slow and gentle. And it's also the word that's used for moderate disease or chronic disease as opposed to acute diseases. So um, so this section is defining each type of herbal preparation based on another word that looks maybe um, and sounds similar. And it also is telling us that each type of preparation has a different usage or different things it's good at. So a long time ago, I became really interested in San formulas because, you know, when I was in school, we studied all of these formulas, Xiaoya San and so forth, but I never saw anyone use it as a powder. It's like if we would either take the little commercial pills that you could buy or we'd decoct, you know, the slices. And so at some point I thought, how did they actually take a son and why? And, and so this was a question I had. And at some point I did some research. And before I talk about that, I want to um, differentiate between granule, granules and powder. Um, by powder, always when I speak, whether it's in the rest of this slideshow or anywhere, when I say powder, I mean ground up herbs granules are these, you know, um, extracts that dissolve and there's a difference. And if you call granules powder, then how can you differentiate between granules and actual powder? So I think we need different words for the two things because they're not the same. And so when I say powder, I mean ground up herbs, which don't dissolve in water. If you boil them or if you pour hot water on top, there's going to be dregs left at the bottom. Um, whereas granules do dissolve and they don't leave dregs at the bottom. And so, you know, if we think that a powder makes a difference, then a pill makes a difference, then a decoction, then certainly granules also make a difference. Um, and so, you know, it's the difference between making coffee from fresh ground beans or using instant coffee. Of course, they're is some decent quality instant coffee, but it's not the same. And so, um, you know, granules perhaps would be good at dissolving accumulations because granules dissolve and powders scatter. You know, they have different actions as far as that's concerned, but they're definitely not the same thing. So Pauger Dafa said the powders scatter. And so this is me with some flour blowing on it outside my building. And you can see how it floats. It goes up in the air, it scatters. And so it's going to have a similar effect within the body. So Pauger Dafa continues um, saying fine powders do not follow the channels and the low vessels. Because you can see with this 
and powder scattering, it's not following a pathway. It's just going every which way. In some ways, it's kind of like Wei Qi. You know, it, it doesn't stay in the channels and vessels. It goes out into the, you know, wherever it wants to go. And so powders are also like that. They're not good at following the channels and the wall vessels. So if you have shoulder pain, you're not going to pick a formula in powder format. But what do they do? They remove accumulations because they scatter accumulations within the organs, including the stomach. They're also good for lung disease with cough. So powder floats. So it's going to treat the upper parts of the body, like the lungs, the outer parts of the body, because it floats outward like that. So it's good for scattering external evils. And um, it's not good for the channels. Um, so based on the kind of things we've looked at already to summarize that, that um, powders easily treat acute conditions. And one of the reasons besides many acute conditions are accumulations, um, blockages. And so of course it, it will scatter the blockage, but also on a practical sense that powders are ready and quick to cook, you can grind a powder six months in advance. And while some people will argue it won't be as potent as if you just ground it, but still, if you're preparing for an emergency, and if you have an airtight container and you store it in a cool, dark place, it's going to retain most of its potency. So then if somebody has an acute condition, you just scoop a spoonful of the powder, um, pour hot water on it, or depending on the specific powder, you might boil it for you know, a few minutes and you've got a very strong liquid to drink. It's like a decoction, except you're decocting powder rather than slices. So if you want to have the herbs as slices, nobody makes a package of a formula six months in advance and has it just in case of emergency because bugs will get in it and, you know, the herbs just are going to deteriorate when they're like that. But as a powder, if they're in an airtight container, they can be retained and ready to go. Um, so they're ready for acute conditions. And we already saw powders scatter. Um, powders treat accumulation in the stomach or other organs because they scatter accumulations. They treat lung disease and coughing. They're light, so they go to the upper jowl and they don't tend to be good for channel problems. That's the summary of what we've talked about. And so one of the things I did in order to consolidate my idea and double check, like, are they just saying stuff or is this how things work? So I'm in California. I use the 83 formulas on the California State Board. But if you look at the National Board's list of formulas, you're going to find the same idea. Uh, Sorry, I'm getting over something and I'm a bit phlegmy still. I need some powders to scatter the phlegm. Yeah. Um, so these are all sun formulas on California State Board lists. I have two slides worth of them. On this slide, if we look, you know, powders float outward. So we see a bunch of exterior conditions or a couple exterior conditions. Powders scatter. So we see excess, 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 excess. Um, constrained chi is an accumulation. So it scatters it. Um, exterior again. So there's a third one. And um, upper and middle jowl, none of these go to the lower jowl because powders are light and they float up. They're not going to be heavy and go downward. A couple of them are combined excess and deficiency, the first one and the next to the last one. So, but none of them treat pure deficiency except Sheng Mai San which is a formula that should be available for emergencies. So here, maybe the format isn't the best. If you had time, you could use the slices, but um, it needs to be ready for emergency.
sorry, had to clear my throat. Um, yeah, COVID was bad. Um, on this next slide, um, then um, there are more state board formulas that are in the SAM format. And um, this one has damp and phlegm. Damp, 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 damp. Phlegm, uh, phlegm, damp heat, damp heat. <laughs> and also wind and other kinds of things. So we can also see middle jowl, um, some lower jowl because damp tends to trickle downward. Um, upper, middle and lower jowl, middle jowl, upper jowl upper um, wind, middle and lower jowl, okay, and, you know, skin. So there are a few exceptions that treat lower jowl, but you can see that damp and phlegm are something that powder readily treats because powder scatters the dampness. And also think, you know, people use like baby powder under their arms or something to absorb moisture. They put baby powder in uh, places that tend to get moist to absorb it. So already we know that powder tends to absorb dampness and then it can scatter it um, or get rid of it in other ways. And so, so we've just really seen that the vast majority of sun formulas that were designed as sun formulas were designed in order to treat upper and middle jowl, to treat excess, to treat wind and damp, um, to treat the exterior because they scatter. Um, and so, okay, that makes sense. Um, powders, I want to say, are economical also because they have so much more surface area and um, that means that it's easier to extract all of the chi and flavor from them. And so you need a much smaller dose. I mean, how much would a whole package of one formula weigh when it's in slices? I don't know, but you add it up and it's quite a bit. Um, but with powders, you might just use like nine or 12 grams of the powder for one dose. And it's very strong. Like when you taste it, you it's really strong. So you use much less quantity of herbs. And, you know, today with prices going up and with, um, you know, the need to conserve the environment, something that uses a smaller dose to get the same results is a good thing. So I already talked about this slide. You can pause the video if you want to read it more slowly. I already said what's here. Um, and as far as cooking powders, I mean, really, you just, for the general powder formula, you scoop a spoonful of it into a pan with enough water for one dose, and you simmer it for a couple minutes, and then you strain it off and drink it. You may have to add a slice of ginger or a, you know, datsao or um, a sprig of peppermint you may need to add something, you know, to it, but you would also for decoction. And so here though is another way, there's this article which you can look up and um, Japanese study where they used a French press to make powder formulas. And um, what's interesting about it um, is, so they took, a couple of herbs. They took um, Ma Huang and Huang Qin, and they also made some formulas that use those herbs, and they also tested them individually, and they made them using a French press as powder. Um, and the results of this is the marker compounds, so they had certain chemicals that they were testing how much comes out in the water. So the marker compounds transferred to the hot water was 1.3 to 1.4 times what was obtained by standard decoction. Like actually the French press method got more of the herbs than boiling them. And they reached peak in about four minutes rather than how long do you have to boil a formula. So um, after four minutes of immersion, 
you know, they have even higher dose of these chemical markers than you would if you were decocting it. So conclusion, using this method, the same or greater amounts of marker compounds were trans transferred into the decoction in a much shorter time with lower consumption of crude drugs because more surface area, so you need a lower dose than with the usual decoction method. The thing that this abstract doesn't say that the article says is you pour the hot water on the powder. And of course, if it's Shaoyasan, you add peppermint and ginger. Um, but when you pour the hot water on, you're supposed to stir it relatively vigorously for 20 seconds, and that increases the extraction. If you don't stir it, there's less extraction. So let's move on to pills, okay? And these are honey pills. I've experimented with making honey pills and water pills and so forth. Honey pills on the right, which are big, too big to swallow, but they're chewable. Um, and they don't taste too bad. And then these are water pills, which, um, you know, are, should be small enough to swallow. And so Pauger Dafa continues that herbal pills to remove disease of the lower body are very large, smooth, and round. But if you want to treat the middle jowl, they're next in size. And if you're making pills for the upper jowl, they should be very small. And so here we get an important idea, like a big old pill is going to fall farther. So it goes to the lower jowl and a medium pill will fall to the middle and a small pill will float up above, kind of like powders float up above. And so here's even a division of why might we use a honey pill versus a water pill. It goes on to say, you know, there were different types of pills that people could make. A pill with flour paste will digest really slowly because it takes a while for the flour to break apart and dissolve. And these, this kind of pill would be dried, so it has to be very small, but it would still dissolve slowly. So even a even though it's one of these smaller pills looking like this, it can still go to the lower gel because it doesn't break apart very quickly. If you make it with like, um, you know, like Huangzhou, the yellow rice wine or vinegar, then it's going to help gather things in like astringent kind of stuff. Um, if it's a honey pill, it also digests slowly and they're also bigger so they can fall to the lower jowl. But actually pills in here, they're specifically saying honey pills can get into the channels in the wool vessels. You can picture like you know, pills are round, so they're going to roll through a pathway, whereas powders are just going to scatter and float outward. But, you know, a pill can roll through a pathway, so it can go to the channels in the glow vessels. Wax pills, which we probably don't use anymore, um, are very slow in taking effect and more difficult to dissolve. So they were actually being used for pills that might have some minerals with toxins so that they dissolve very slowly, kind of like time release idea. Let's look at the pills on California State Board list. As I said, you'll probably get a similar thing if you looked at the national. All of California's list is in the nationals list, but the nationals list is larger. Um, so you'll probably find the same thing. So of these honey pills, this slide is all honey pills, pills that were originally designed to be made with honey. Um, most of them go to the lower jowl because that's just that what big pills do. One of them does go to the middle jowl, Li Zhong Wan, which is actually a very nice tasting pill. It's got honey and, and ginger, and it just tastes like a ginger candy, pretty much. It's pretty strong ginger, but yeah. Um, and then one other of them, the Xiao Huo Ru Dan, um, goes to the low vessels. But remember, it said pills can go to the channels and vessels. So those are the honey pills. And then the non-honey pills, which are mostly called water pills, which are mostly going to be small so that you could swallow them um, rather than chew them. We can see upper jowl, middle jowl, mostly middle jowl. One of them goes to the lower jowl, um, middle and lower jowl. A couple go to the lower jowl. So 
this um, guideline of like bigger pills for the lower jaw, smaller pills for the middle jaw, smallest pills for the upper jaw doesn't totally hold true. You can see that um, three of these go to the lower jaw, um, but you know, overall the idea is kind of there. So as I said, honey pills are soft, they're large, and you can chew them because they're soft. And so since they're big and heavy, they go to the lower jowl. Um, and also, um, even though Xiao Huo Lo Dan is not a honey pill, but still pills are round and can roll through the vessels. Um, and so Xiao Huo Lo Dan does that. The water pills are hard. And even though they use other things like ginger juice or vinegar or whatever, they're still called water pills if they're not honey pills for the most part. Um, and so they're swallowed whole and they mostly go to the middle, a couple to the upper jowl. And um, here I say only, yeah, one to the upper jowl. Um, they're bigger than powders, but smaller than honey pills. So they have a little bit gravitate to the middle jowl. So I started calling this concept buoyancy. That is not from any ancient Chinese book. This is just my name for this kind of concept. And in Chinese, it's fu li. It's like floating power or floating strength. And so I there's one more quote, which actually isn't talking about pills, powders, and you know, decoctions, but it has a similar idea. It's from Wenbing Tiaobian by Wu Jitong, a really famous Wenbing, doctor really famous Wenbing book. And he says, light, clear herbs are chosen for the lungs. If you cook them too much, the flavor becomes very thick or concentrated. And then they enter the middle jowl. And he says, the lungs are in the highest position in the body. So when herbs are too heavy, they go past the location of the disease. And this is that idea that thick, heavy things are going to fall deeper. Thin, light, small things are going to float to the top. And so even though he's talking about flavor, um, it's still this idea that something about the formula will help it reach higher or lower parts of the body or even go into the channels or and so forth so so this idea of buoyancy is a tendency it's not a rule um it's a guideline it's not a rule but the tendency is that powders will go to the upper jaw water pills will go to the middle jaw and honey pills will go to the lower jaw there are many exceptions but that's just a tendency and so I'm calling this buoyancy. If you look up buoyancy in Google images, you'll find images like this where, you know, cork floats and wood half, you know, floats half sinks and aluminum sinks. And so that's kind of like these three types of, of formulations. Um, so that's the concept of buoyancy. And one last quote that's related to this is, uh, another book, Su Shen Liangfang, um, says that decoctions, powders, and pills each have times when they're appropriate. The main principle is that if you want to reach the five yin organs and the four limbs, decoctions are the best thing. If you want to remain in the diaphragm and stomach, powders are better. Also, Herbs that have no toxins are good for decocting. Herbs with like mild, minor toxins are good as powders and herbs with major toxins are better for pills. We saw how some of the pills, depending on the type, could be slower to digest. So less load of, of toxins, quick, you know, it's time released kind of. Further, use decoctions if you want to be quick. Powders are a little slower. Pills are very slow. This is the general idea. So that's my little talk about, you know, why did ancient people design some formulas as powders and others as pills and others as decoctions? And, you know, if you actually understand chi and flavor and, and similar concepts, this should make some sense to you. And it should explain some stuff like why is Shaoyosan a san? Because it scatters constraint. 
you know, why is um, Renchen Baidu San the San? Because their evil's invading. And even though the formula also treats deficiency, it still scatters the evils. And, you know, why is Lu Wei Di Huang Wan a one and a honey pill because it goes to the lower jaw and also honey pills will tend to supplement. And so you want the heavy, big round pill to go to the lower jaw. And also when you're supplementing kidneys, that's a slow process and, and pills are slower, um, but they're not going to, you know, hit you in the face. <laughs> um, they're not going to be harsh. Um, so that's the general idea. So I hope that you find, you know, this topic meaningful in your practice of medicine.